What's up guys, it's Tonsi and we're back with a quick TV show review and in this case it's going to be the full season for Jupiter's Legacy, the show on Netflix. So going into it having not read the comics or any prior content, I want to say that overall it was a good show so this review is actually going to be pretty quick because I didn't think that there was a lot to say if you've gone into it having already seen shows like The Boys, um, The Watchmen film whether the original or the um, extended version or any of the related comics. Um, just because it felt like a good and nice, tightly uh, written show. And the ending to the season was very well set up where they can set up a season two and potentially more, depending on how much content they have and how creative they want to be with it. So um, overall, um, I want to say going into it as far as um, preconceptions is that I thought it was going to be a lot like the TV like the Amazon Prime show The Boys but it felt a little bit more like Justice League meets The Watchmen so you have of course the obvious analogs for the Superman or for Superman and the Utopian uh, Lady Liberty and Wonder Woman um, I didn't really see a um, Batman type figure or a Martian Manhunter type of character um, but we did have a Professor X character in the form of the Utopian's brother and I actually found his character to be particularly intriguing because he felt a lot like a fallen uh, Professor X rather than the uh, good version of him so imagine if Professor X like in the uh, reboot with um, Days of Future Past and those films where um, instead of being the um, good person or wanting to see the good side of humanity he believes uh, Magneto and sets up the war between mutants and humans. So overall, that character was most the most intriguing. And then, otherwise, the show was more of a look of the changing of the times. So the original, um, the old, old guard of superheroes, like with Utopia or the Utopian and the rest, were trying to solve the problems of their time, but. Now when they have kids and they try to apply those same principles and ideals, it doesn't quite work because the ideals have changed, the goalposts have moved, and things like that. So it's less about trying to hold the same ideals, but more of adapting those ideals and having the parents understand the times that they're in. So the one thing that I liked that they did well over the course of the season was slowly transition the parents, notably the Utopian and Lady Liberty, to the idea that their kids are not necessarily rebelling against parents there which is the obvious connection but it's more of their rebelling against the idea that the parents are not listening they're trying to stick to their old ideals instead of seeing the times that they live in and the son portrays it best in that he's trying to balance the current world and his dad's ideals in the old world and we sort of come to a tenuous resolution at the end even though it seems like they're going to set up the son separating from the father and teaming up with the uncle but i think there's a chance for redemption and rebuilding that relationship because the father has always had that idealistic view of the world and he doesn't listen but if he can translate those thoughts and ideals into applying them into the present world then there's a chance there's still a chance for redemption um, potentially and not necessarily with, even with the son but with the daughter so we'll see how that goes um, especially since the daughter is dating the arch enemy of the utopian so we'll kind of see how that goes if they ever do green light and make a second season um, otherwise that's really about it and I like that they mentioned had a drop in the second half of the season as far as um, some of the stories of HP Lovecraft and so if you've seen uh, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country on HBO, then you kind of see that kind of tenuous relationship as far as the race wars go. So I kind of like that they did introduce um, some that sort of um, tenuous racial relation. They didn't really delve into it too much. So it's one of those things where it could have been handled badly and potentially shoehorned in. So they actually took a step back and didn't do anything like that but they did or felt like they acknowledged it so it's one of those things where it could have been handled well, it could have been handled in either direction good or worse but having not read the story of the comics again um, it's one of those things where it could have been handled poorly and so it felt like it's saying they were saying yes we acknowledge what's 
the, the sign of the times, but we're not going to push it too hard just yet. And to bring to uh, bring it back around to the Batman type character, there was a guy in the wheelchair who was the um, son of one of the workers in the Utopian's factory um, for the business that Utopian's dad used to run. So I want to say that he potentially was the Batman just because they were in his lab, I guess. But it's one of those things where they didn't bring it up very well, or didn't feel like they presented it very well. So um, it's hard to say if he was that Batman type of character. So I kind of wanted to see more of him, and potentially in the second season, I'm kind of hoping that we do. Um, we did have enough of a role with his daughter, but I'm kind of hoping that we see more of him in action in the second season, or if he is a Batman type of character that um, he maybe figures out a way to fix his ailments and with prosthetics or maybe medicine or some sort of advanced technology where he can be a superhero again. So um, with that being said, overall I do recommend it. So um, as far as giving it a grade, I'd probably give it about a grade of 90%. And it's very well done. It's very little I can say negative about it. Um, in the so if I do read the comics, I would have that comparison. But overall, I enjoyed it. It does start off kind of slow. Though once you get used to the pacing, it actually uh, picks up nicely by the second half of it as far as the uh, main villain, whose name I already forgot. But um, he looks like the main villain from, um, again, uh, I don't want to say the uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, but the guy from the sequel, um, when he, the guy who sets up the Four Horsemen. So. Um, and it's, I guess he's kind of like the dark side looking character, so, um, if, I guess for a reference, but, um, I kind of want to see more of him and maybe a little bit more of his origin story. And I think he was the friend to the Utopian before they got their powers, so, it's one of those connections that I also found that it was kind of lacking, so, um, maybe they'll bring it up more if they do make a season two. So, that's all there is for this particular review, so, um, like I said, it's a good show to watch. I would recommend going into it as comparison, not like a boy, like the boys from Amazon Prime, but a Justice League meets the Watchmen, because they do delve a lot into the superhero-ness of the characters, um, the Union, which is basically this show's version of the Justice League, but a lot of the background of the characters, the transitioning of the duties from the old guard to the new guard, which is kind of a translation would be in The Watchmen where we have the original Night Owl and the new one, um, the original Civil, Civil Spectre and her daughter, um, the comedian and characters like that. So a lot of um, character development within uh, comparison to the old guard. Whereas The Boys was a lot more, it was, they tried to balance the superheroes and humans, but it was a little bit more focused on the humans. So and a lot of violence for sure there. Um, here we have one big piece of violence, but in general, and then we have a few fight scenes, but nothing overall that can be on the level of the boys. So that's kind of why I would want to say that it's less like the boys and more like um, just a sleep meets watch. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, corrections, or thoughts or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelN01. And of course, the website is headphonesnail.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, all the su um, support options, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.